This is Nate Skid. Yeah, Nate. Uh, restaurant reporter for Crane's Detroit Business. Yes, sir. Uh, about the coolest places in town to dine. Have a seat right here, Nate. Oh, ready. Welcome to the WXYZ uh, webcast. That'll work. Yeah, that'll work for you. So you get to review restaurants. Um, well, I get to cover the, so, the industry. Or, or cover the industry. Now, how come it is you look like that and I look like this and I am not covering the restaurant industry? Uh, I try to keep in shape, run marathons uh, if we can. Yeah, so uh, the important thing about uh, what's happening here with all the international media, and I think we, we've got a number of 5,000, maybe 6,000 uh, media members from across the world, including, I don't remember how many countries they said there were. But this is a chance for Detroit to really shine beyond the auto show. Exactly. So are you looking at what's happening kind of around the venue here where these people are heading out and uh, socializing at night? Well, I hope they get out and see the city. I mean, you know, the national narrative about Detroit is so much different than kind of boots on the ground, what's actually happening right. here. And there's this kind of do-it-yourself craft movement, you know, that's taking place. A lot of um, younger entrepreneurs are coming in and opening up some really good restaurants, some really good, some really good places, you know. I mean, um, if you can get out, I'd go to... There's, the bar scene is just kind of blossoming. Right, right. So there's, oh. I, I was going to say, give me, give me your list then of uh, what you would consider the coolest restaurants. Uh, do you want to start like if, in this area here? So we're talking about the people who are here, what they're going to be able to get to? Sure. You know, well, I definitely use Uber if you can. Uber. You know, all the places I'm about to suggest are within two miles of, right. of Kobo. Yep. Um, if you're looking for drinks, to James Distillery in Corktown. Okay. It's in the shadow of the Michigan train station. Those guys are creating and distilling amazing spirits. They have such a cool bar. I mean, it's it's the amount of work that they did to open and and the type of, of, of product they're producing is, is, is super high quality. Yes, yeah, so I've seen it, but I have not been in there yet. It's amazing. Okay, I gotta Get go in. Get the gin mule, the Corktown mule. Oh, it's fantastic. Corktown mule, all right. It's fantastic. All right. Um, I would definitely hit Sugar House if you can. Mm -hmm. um, it's very high in cocktails, like mixologist. Um, they make all their own syrups from scratch. You know, everything there is really handmade. Um, mm -hmm. You're not going to experience anything like that at, you know, a mass-produced bar. Um, Great Lakes in Midtown. Uh -huh. Great Lakes, they have probably the best beer list in the state. I mean, you know, they're, they're, they're hyper-local, but just because they're local doesn't mean they don't look for the quality. So they don't sacrifice quality just to say that, you know, something was made close by. And are they uh, brewing their own also there? Um, they do not brew their own also, mm -hmm. but they have a, a, a huge Michigan focus on their beers. Good, good. So a lot of bells. And then yeah. their wine list is actually, you know, incredible. Um, the owner of uh, Great Lakes travels the world seeking out wines, and he actually sources the wines directly from the, 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 the winemakers. Does that sound like the best job on earth, traveling the world looking for good wine? Yeah. It yeah. Does. I mean, come on. Yeah. Um, if, if you want to get a real sense of, uh, mm -hmm. of, of kind of quintessential Detroit, Bronx Bar in Midtown. Right, right. Bronx Bar, I mean, you're going to get a great burger there also. And, and the feel of the place is just, I mean, it's unlike any other. And then, um, you know, if you're looking for more fine dining, sure, there's roast in Texas, right, in right. Brazil, and, and, and Joe Muir, some regular places. But, you know, there's also the Whitney, which, you know, it's such a beautiful mansion, right. pink granite. You know, the, the, the place is really astounding. Um, so... You know, if you're looking to, for something, if you can manage to get outside of, of right, downtown, right. Torino and Ferndale is, 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 oh, is yeah, amazing. Yeah, yeah. The stand just opened in Birmingham, which mm -hmm. is getting really good reviews. Joe uh, Bistro Joe's in Birmingham also is getting really good reviews. So if you can find a way outside of, of the city, I mean, it's Detroit has a lot going on in the food scene right now. It's really exciting, and a lot of new places are opening up that, you know, this area hasn't seen before. Yeah, what is it about Detroit that you think, and actually I know the answer to this, I used to live in New York, so I'm going to, I know the answer to this is, but what is it about Detroit that, that people are finding makes this a good place for this kind of thing? It's wide open. Yeah. You know, there's so much competition in other, in, in other cities, you know, in Los Angeles or New York, if you open a chef-driven bistro, you're one of hundreds that have opened. Mm -hmm. Here, there's not that many, there's not that, you know, that, that many competitors, quite frankly, right. but... What really happened, the really cool story is this. A lot of people, young, younger people, millennials, people my age, you know, about 30 years old, well, they had no opportunity coming out of college in Michigan or in southeast Detroit, you know, southeast Michigan, Detroit. So what they did was they all left. Mm -hmm. And they experienced things and they learned things from other cities. And what they realized is they want to bring that back home. Right. And so you have this kind of, you know, influx of people who aren't the from prodigal. Michigan, the prodigal son, right? Yeah. You know, and, the, and and they're coming here and they're they're planting roots here, and it's more than just a business opportunity for them. 
people are personally invested in seeing this region succeed. Yeah. And believe it or not, having good food and good food options is one of those you know kind of qualities every good city has. I also tell you that uh, uh, there's only one group of people on earth that will impress New Yorkers, Detroiters. Yeah. It is so funny. You if you tell people in New Yorker from Detroit, they'll go, oh, all right. You know. It, you, it's you're cool to be. See, we don't understand that in Detroit. It is cool to be from Detroit. I had, I had the, I moved here in 2008 from St. Louis mm -hmm. um, for this job actually, and um, they they, my company sent me to New York for a day to shadow a reporter there to kind of understand mm -hmm. how, you know, journalism works, kind of on a mass scale. Right. And I was there during the Lehman Brothers meltdown. Oh yeah. yeah. And I was a Detroiter for all of three months at the time. Mm -hmm. And when I went to New York and I told people I was from Detroit, they were, oh my gosh. Yeah. What? I, I thought they were, so I was supposed to be impressed and, uh, by no, them. People are impressed they, by they, the and, and everywhere I go, you know, it's been six years now since I moved here and, and everywhere I go, people are so interested in the city. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's just it's just amazing what kind of, I don't want to say street cred, but you get It is street cred, Detroit. but that's what, when you, just, you come up with this list, that's what's happening is what, as you said, it's it's the young people who have either come from here and come back or they're just come from other places because they're saying, you well, know, Detroit's a place I can make a stand. I can exactly. I can make a mark and, exactly. and it, it is, people will respect it. You get, you know, there's a chance to create the city in your vision right now and that's priceless. So Nate, uh, and we'll find your columns on, uh, Crane's business, right? You want to go to cranesdetroit.com. I've got a stuck computer here, so oh, unfortunately, it's okay. yeah, I'm going to have to. So uh, cranesdetroit.com back, backslash backslash skid, and you'll get Ski right it. to my blog, and it's all the insidery information on food restaurants you could ever want. So you didn't decide to go with the, the column named Skid Row then? <laughs> <laughs> That'd have been <laughs> a little too long. I know. Yeah, you, you've heard that one. Uh, Nate, thank you very, very much. It's a pleasure right. meeting you also. Thank you. I will read your column with great interest and, and check out the recommendations because you nailed them right there. Oh, well, I appreciate it. All right, Nate, thank you very much. Have a great and one. Don't forget to take that off before you take off. Nate Skid with uh, uh, Crane's Detroit Business with uh, the second best job in the world besides traveling the world <laughs> looking for wine. You get to actually uh, uh, look at restaurants and write about them. All right, thank you very much, Nate.